Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, we're going to talk about the latest update to Lightroom Classic CC. That is version 8.3. Real quick, many of you know that I sell Lightroom presets and profiles. In the description below this video will be an email address. If you email me, I'll give you a promo code so you can get the Lightroom presets and or profiles for 50% off. Okay, today Adobe updated Lightroom to version 8.3 and they did of course the normal bug fixes and they added some more camera info and lens info to the program, but they did add two features that I want to talk about. The first one I'm just going to mention, and it's called flat field correction. And what happens often with some lenses, you may get a color cast because of the lens, or you may get some color vignetting because of the lens. And if you do encounter that with the latest version of Lightroom, you'll be able to correct it. Now, it does require that you take a reference photo, and usually you would take a reference photo uh, through a diffuser of, of a diffuser, a white diffusing sheet or a diffusing piece of plastic. So basically, you keep the same exact lighting conditions you had, and you would take then a photo of this white diffuser, and then what you would do is you would go to the library module of Lightroom and you would select all the images that are involved. So you select either the, the first image or the last image has to be that calibration image. So you take, let's say, select that one first and then select all the subsequent images that were shot in that photo shoot. Then you would go up to library and you could see it's grayed out here. It's flat field correction. That's because I don't have more than one image selected. So as soon as I select that calibration uh, image, and then select another image, it would be active. And then when you do that, um, a dialog box will come up and will be able to uh, remove the color cast or remove the vignette and uh, correct the lighting issues that might have been caused by your lens. Now, in a future video, I will demonstrate this new feature of Lightroom a little more thoroughly. I just don't have a calibrated image to demonstrate it right now, but I will do that. What I do want to talk about is the second thing they added to Lightroom, and it's over in the Develop module, and it's a new slider. It's under the Basic tab. It's also under the Graduated Filter, Radio Filter, and Brush, and it's called Texture, and it's in this Presence section, and it's really kind of similar to clarity. Uh, when I go to this texture slider, now look at the wood around the uh, horse. As I move it to the right, you can see it's enhancing the grain of the wood. If I go to the left, it's going to soften the image, as you can see. Now that, of course, is very similar to clarity. You see, as I move clarity to the right, it just seems like a more heavy-handed version of the texture filter, doesn't it? So when I move from clarity from zero to plus 100, that's what we get. And if I move texture from zero to plus 100, that's what we get. So it's, it's really similar in many uh, aspects to clarity, uh, just not as uh, heavy handed. Now where it will, I think, come into more use possibly is when you're doing portraiture and you want to soften skin. And I'll zoom in on this uh, image and you could see the, it's an unprocessed photo. And if I go to the texture slider, now, of course, we don't want to move this to the right. It's going to enhance her pores. We want to move it to the left. And you can see it just really kind of blurs out the skin. Uh, really, And that is really kind of what clarity does as well. You know, just clarity, again, just does it a little bit more. So in my opinion, and this is just my opinion, don't send me hate mail, but it is my opinion. I don't think the texture slider is really that significant of a feature. It really doesn't separate itself that much from clarity. Now, in an instance like this, you're really not going to want to use the global adjust, uh, global texture slider that's in the basic tab because it will soften everything. You can see it's softening her hair and her, her top, everything. We don't want to do that, right? So we're probably, in this instance, 
going to use the brush. And in this case, you could see the texture slider is right here. And then you could come in with a brush and you could brush in this adjustment on her skin to soften her skin. Now, I haven't been able to play with it too much. Of course, when you're doing this, you're going to want to avoid her lips, her eyes, her hair, her eyebrows even, her eyelashes. You want to keep those sh as sharp as possible. I haven't played around with it too much. Now, I'm just going to do her face. Of course, you probably want to do her neck and her shoulders and such too. But I think what might um, be a way to use this adjustment is you use it in, um, in conjunction <clears throat> with the clarity slider as well. So now I have this texture slider down. There's a before and there's after. What I think you might stumble upon doing is let's put that back to zero is perhaps you use clarity to soften the skin by moving clarity to the left and then try to bring back some of the texture with the texture slider. So maybe in conjunction, these two sliders might do a better, more effective job on softening skin than would any one of the sliders by itself. Don't know for sure. Like I said, I haven't used it too much yet. Uh, obviously, it just got updated this morning for me. So, you know, again, I, I don't think it's that significant of an update. Uh, perhaps that flat field correction, uh, like I said, I don't have an image. I need that calibration image to use that. Perhaps that's more significant of an update. Um, uh, flat field corrections often used in astrophotography uh, just to get the colors right, uh, the sky, uh, sometimes the color of the sky will bleed over into the star and you'd get this color, color cast on the star or on the planet and it's not um, true color and it's very difficult to correct. And a flat field correction is often done to correct that color cast for astrophotography. And I don't do astrophotography and I don't have a calibrated or calibration image to do, as I mentioned, but I'm going to do it. Um, and uh, hopefully soon I'll have a video where I demonstrate flat field correction. Uh, hopefully that works real well. Uh, and if it does, those of you that encounter this a lot, where you have kind of a color cast um, that a certain lens is doing, a certain lighting that you often do is producing a color cast. This often happens if you're uh, using a green background. You're going to key out the green because you're going to swap the background. Quite often, with specific lights and a specific lighting setup, it may make the skin tones of your subject a little bit green because of the green background. And that is kind of difficult to get rid of. So um, maybe this will help. We'll see. But I'll definitely uh, cover that in a future video. So that's it. I wish I could tell you there was a lot more of an update here than there is, but there isn't. Uh, give me your thoughts below and what do you think about it? And, um, you know, we'll go from there. Thank you everyone for watching my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.